Hey everybody, welcome to another episode of On The Paint Table. It's my weekly show where you see what I got done, what I'm working on, and what is coming up. So, I had a big week this week. I, Monday through Wednesday, crushed out all the rest of my Warhammer Quest miniatures. Um, and I filmed three games of it this week. It was a lot of fun. I had a, a great time uh, going back through this box set, getting everything done up, and getting ready to rock and roll, um, playing some dungeon quests with the original four classic adventures. I do have four additional adventures to paint up. Uh, some I haven't found them yet. Some I have the Warrior Priest. Um, I have the Troll Slayer. Uh, I have the um, Imperial Noble. Uh, I have, sorry, I have the Pit Fighter and I have the Witch Hunter. The Imperial Noble is already actually painted up because he's part of my Warhammer um, Fantasy Battle Skirmish War Band, so he's uh, he's ready to rock and roll as well. Uh, and I've also got, thanks to Greg Collinson, a huge expansion of monsters that I'm going to get to work to. Uh, not right away because they need to go in the dip and get stripped and get cleaned off. Um, but it'll add some chaos to my Warhammer quest, some, some sort of thematic chaos as people reach higher battle levels and stuff. I got some more stuff I want to paint for Infinity Code 1. Um, not uh, next week, but the week after, no, two weeks after next week. I'm going to try and do solo a um, full size game, like a mid tier game, 25 points uh, on a 4x3. And I'm going to get some more stuff ready to take both the starter sets from Caldstrom. Because I don't have Beyond Caldstrom yet, but I do have access to the um, Darfos box. I'm going to take it up to a full 25 point match uh, between two opposing Yu Ching and Panosini, the White Banner, and the um, Winter Four forces. So. Painting some nieces for my um, Winter Four, and then painting like a Hack Tao and a Tiger Soldier and the Dire Foes and stuff too. So, yeah, it's gonna be super fun. So, uh, yeah, let's see what got done and what is coming up. So, the start of the week, this is what was painted for Armor Quest. I painted the Barbarian, four Orcs, and eight Snotlings. And now at the end of the week, I have all this done. Um, there's an old saying in, uh, in backpacking and mountaineering that sometimes if you stop, you'll never get to the summit. So I just pushed on to the top this week um, and thanks to Citadel Contrast Paints, got these wonderfully vivid 90s style colors on everything. Uh, intrepid Warm Request players will notice I haven't finished the shields on the Skaven, but after painting 89 miniatures in uh, three days, I figured that was good enough for now and I will finish and attach the shields later. That was, I was too excited to play and I wanted to get everything on the table and get ready to go. Um, so, for the orcs uh, and the goblins, the recipe was prime them with um, Citadel Grey Seer, give all of the skin the uh, contrast orc flush wash. Uh, the metallics were done with P3 Boiler Black. Um, I did Snakebite Leather for the leathers uh, and Doom, but not Doom Bull Frown, Gorgonta Fur for the other leathers on the other orcs over here and the, the feet on the, the, the goblins. Um, Mephist on Red for all of the red bits. And then just other various contrasts for the base coats. Uh, when the base coats were drying for contrast paints, I did the metallics and threw down some Nelm Oil um, gloss. And then once that was drying, uh, threw down the Sterling Mud on the bases. Uh, then just picked up details, highlight colors for everything. I think the green I actually highlighted with a um, Scale 75 Emerald Green. Just gave it this wonderful vivid pop. Uh, did the rest of the details and then um, dry brushed some Astronomicon or whatever the, the light medium gray from Citadel is now on the, the, the bases. And when that was done, just black, black, black base terms on everything. Made them dungeony. Uh, and that was the orcs. The spiders were done with some, again, Mephist on red contrast paint and the um, black Templar on the bodies. Uh, everything was from the same base coats. Uh, I believe I used Dark Oath Flash, uh, highlighted up with um, some P3 Cardic Flash, I think it was, mixed with some Scale 75 like Bone Flash. Uh, same with the wings, just went a little bit higher on the wings and the bats. Uh, and then some um, Black Templar for the bats fur and the fur on the, the, the bulls. Heroes were all done individually, just different contrast paints. I matched the original color schemes because I, I wanted to make everything look classic. Uh, same with the Skaven. The Skaven were the Warpstone green, I think, contrast paint. And then Gorka to fur for the fur. Blended up to some flesh tones. Again, Cardic flesh, I'm pretty sure, for the... Um, the, what should I call it? The, uh, the, like the, the ends of the toes and the hands and stuff on the Skaven. And yeah, metallics were just done boiler black with some, I think it was uh, Agrax Earthshade Wash. And then uh, it was Wildwood. Yeah, Wildwood, I'm pretty sure, for the rats. Uh, and the tails were painted again with just flesh tones. Uh, nice and easy. All the base were in the same with Sterling Mud up to, uh, to some gray. And then these guys back here, I think we're scape the Prime Black, Scaven White Dinge. Dry brush followed by mixing in some Ulthuan Grey to the Scabin White Dinge to give it a lighter tone. Picked up the metals of Boiler Black, washed everything with a mix of Agras Gloss and uh, Athenian Camo Shade, I'm pretty sure, whatever that green camo murky stuff is, just give it like the drippy, kind of like green spots and all the all the stone. 
um, and then some agriculture shade on the metals and that was it there we go 89 miniatures i'm, pr I'm pretty sure i counted them before yeah because it's 12 goblins uh 12 orcs and snotlings so 24 uh plus 36 skaven bat sorry 48 so that's 72 no, it's not. Yeah, 72, 82, 88, I guess. Yeah, 88, because the Minotaurs and the Three Heroes is six more. Yeah, because it's one, two, three, four, five, six dozen, which is 72, 82, 88. So 88 models this week. Uh, yeah, that felt pretty good. <laughs> 88 models plus the, um, the uh, what is it, the 11 models from the original sets. There's the, the 13 that I'd painted before. He has 101, because 101 miniatures in the box. So all 101 miniatures from Warhammer Quest now played, and I've played through three games. Uh, and it's just as good as I remember, one of the greatest solo games of all time. Um, and I got some heroes to paint up and more monsters and stuff, and I'll show you those in a second. With all that batch painting done though, I'm excited to do some individual painting. These guys have been sitting in the carrying case for a while. Um, I can't remember what I was originally planning on doing, but I'm gonna rebase them on the new style bases uh, and then paint up my two new uh, Army of the White Banner add-ons along with the um, Direfoes mini, which will take me 25 points. And that's a hacker um, tiger soldier and of course a hack tau hacker. And those will be some nice add-ons to add some punch. Now uh, some niece and the, what's his name? The the gunner, what's his name? The, the troll slayer from um, the Direfoes box get added to the winter for, but they're at home right now. Getting assembled and primed. Um, and I'm jazzed. I'm gonna mix the uh, the train from Caldstrom with the train from Wildfire, so that we can get two sets of train. Because there's a train setup thing in the in the, the book, and we're gonna play with the full rules uh, and play one of the missions from the new uh, Code One book. So playing with all the Code One rules. And well, yeah, I'll do a 25 point game and just do a, a full how to play Code One after having gone through Caldstrom, and that'll be in I guess three weeks now, because the week coming will be the next second part two of Caldstrom's Let's Play, and then. Um, Part three will be uh, just a full 25 point game, like the mid tier size game on a four by three. And then look at this glorious pile of Greg Collinson's youth <laughs> right here. Uh, Greg's from Party Foul. If you haven't checked out Party Foul, they do uh, War Machine Hearts commentary and jokes and just like fun wargaming stuff. Um, they also host a lot of tournaments around here in Ontario for War Machine Hordes um, and other games too. Uh, and this was like one of his really early Warhammer armies. And I guess he was going to bin it and he shot me a message uh, about a month or two ago saying like, hey man, I, like this stuff's just going to go in the garbage. I don't have any use for it. You know, would you find a home for it? And I was like, of course. And what perfect timing. All of this stuff is actually, uh, except for I think the Chaos Warriors. These are all tier one monsters from... Um, from what call it? From Warhammer Quest. So I can I have blank Warhammer Quest cards. The game comes with it, and I literally sleeved a bunch of them so I could do these as encounters. So I'm gonna mix in some chaos and do some random chaos encounters. And what I might do is um, is sort of like mix and match uh, depending upon like the the theme I want to do for my adventures, where the monsters come from. But this will be my chaos expansion. These are Battlemasters ogres. Look at how cool they are. Greg actually like pillaged a Battlemaster set into this army, too, which I think is awesome. Uh, along with Battlemasters Chaos Warriors with the halberds here. So like I'm gonna mix these in and, and paint them. I think this is a Battlemasters wizard. I can't remember where this wizard is from. He's awesome though. With this big stick. I'm pretty sure he's from Battlemasters as well. Uh, and then a Warmer Quest Wizard, a Slambo, like a classic lead Slambo, and this like dude as a, a Bloodletter, he's the Bloodletter head um, Chaos Warrior. Uh, and these will be like my characters and my sorcerers and stuff. I'm not sure which ones I'll paint first. Uh, some Dragon Ogres, classic Metal Dragon Ogres, some uh, classic Beastmen, and a mix of classic Chaos Warriors here. There's like a Quest one, three Battlemasters ones, and three of the. Uh, the what should we call it? The the plastic box that one. So I I like being like having different poses, and I figured it'd be cool to paint like a couple of each. Um, and then the beastman, like this guy's gonna get pillaged for his halberd because one of the halberds is broken. But it's D six plus two. So D six plus two beastman, D six plus one chaos warriors, uh, three D three or one ogres, and then I think it's D three at battle level two for the. Um, the what call it the dragon ogres uh, or like one and then and then the heroes can sometimes get mixed as well as you roll like more poorly so i'm stoked make some event cards and some monster cards for all these bad guys and yeah this will be once start introducing new heroes on three i've done three quests so far with the uh the the current hero posse and that's going to go until june you guys will see the first uh, quest game in two weeks was bfg today yeah it's two weeks two weeks from this thursday basically will be the first uh the let's play warmer quest and then from there, um, yeah, I'm just going to start adding new bad guys, add new heroes and stuff too. It's going to be fun. We'll explore like classic 90s Warhammer together. So we got another 88 models painted this week, pushing me to 271 for the year. Um, yeah, sometimes you just have a big week and you push your numbers up a whole bunch. Uh, and it's on eight, eight, like I'm looking at 885 for my total, which means if I get to 400 by the end of June, 
Uh, I'm about halfway there. And I might. I mean, who knows? If I paint all this chaos stuff and finish all my code one stuff by the end of this month, uh, that's going to push me well over 300. So I think mean, there's how many models here for the chaos stuff? There's 15, 21. There's another six or eight, so 30 something. Like I'll, I'll definitely get over 300 if I finish this in the code one stuff before the month ends. Uh, plus all the heroes I want to paint for Warhammer Quest and whatever various insanity like comes into my mind. Um, but yeah, it felt really good to get that done. And now that the sort of like foundation Warhammer Quest is finished, I can just sort of add stuff as I want it. Like there's no more like big back breaking, like <laughs> I gotta get all this stuff finished before I can play part of it. And that's really satisfying to get done in one week. Um, and a great, like if you're looking for that 90s bright pop to your miniatures, uh, the contrast paints do a fantastic job of that. So I was really happy with how they turned out because they do really evoke that 1990s kind of like bright fifth edition Warhammer look. Um, and the great thing about Warhammer Quest, I said, you'll see it when you see the Let's Play, is that it has rules for like every 90s Warhammer miniature in it. And by the time you get to battle level 10, you're fighting like Emperor Dragons and Great Unclean Ones and like it gets, it gets super bananas if you survive that long because it's a pretty, it's a pretty unforgiving game. Um, so yeah, so we'll see you next week to see what I get finished as far as my painting plans. Uh, until next time on Ash, have a I hope you enjoyed that video. If you uh, want to support the channel, of course, like and subscribe and hit the little bell below to get notifications when I post future content. I do post stuff seven days a week. Uh, if you want to support the channel um, further, you can, of course, buy a t-shirt through Spreadshirts, um, buy a measuring gauge or objective markers from Deathrite Designs. Um, or, of course, most importantly, there is Patreon. Patreon is what makes all this possible. Uh, keeps the lights on, pays for the studio costs, pays for the equipment, model costs, and everything else. And most importantly, um, puts food in my kids' bellies and a roof over their heads. Uh, big thanks to everyone past, future who supported me. Uh, I do this stuff because of you guys, and of course, I will continue doing it as long as I can.